Hey, and welcome back to the Corporate Finance Academy. Today we're going to talk about salary and career progression. So, we are going to go through the trajectory of a corporate finance career. We're going to discuss how quickly you can progress and what you can expect for compensation as you climb the ladder. Okay, so over here you can see total career, time and tier, and we're going to work our way up the pyramid here. So at the bottom of the pyramid, you've got kind of two entry points. So one is the Financial Leadership Development Program, or FLDP, and then you have regular financial analyst jobs. So these are entry-level jobs right out of undergraduate university programs. Um, often you'll hear them called a junior analyst, a lead analyst, or something along those lines. So FLDP programs are the, the best way to get into corporate finance generally. I think your base salary is typically going to be between sixty and $85,000. And sometimes you get a bonus, probably not much more than zero to 5000 Sometimes it's a sign-on bonus. Occasionally it could be an annual bonus or profit share. Um, and then you've got the, the direct hire type things, which are outside of a program. Uh, there's just a wider range here. It could be $35,000 uh, $35, a year. It could be $70,000 a year. There are a lot of variables here. It depends on where you live, how big the company is. Um, but obviously there's a lot, of, um, a lot of distance between those, uh, and it really just depends. Now, most of these FLDP programs are two years. Um, uh, and then in your entry-level job, ideally, you'd want to spend two years in it. Uh, it could certainly be more than that. Um, but what we're tracking over here is if you're on a fast track of a career, if you really want to advance your career, how long will you spend in each of these uh, levels of the pyramid? So next, you'd have a financial analyst. Uh, the base salary is probably in the forty-seven dollars to $87,000 range. Um, your average bonus would be $6,000. And these are based off of uh, glass door averages for everything that was posted as of a few months ago. So your, your total comp on average at the financial analyst level is $70,000. Uh, but again, that's the average. So ideally you would expect to spend another two years in this level of the pyramid, which will bring your total career up to four years. So the next level of the pyramid here is senior financial analyst. So you'd be coming in to be a senior financial analyst, um, you know, just four years into your career. And these are generally individual contributor jobs. So you're not yet at the point where you're leading a team, but you're doing big, important work. Uh, you're probably working for somebody, maybe at the director level at this point, um, sometimes maybe even the VP level. But it's a, it's a big individual contributor job, uh, working on uh, more complicated things, maybe less transactional in nature. So your base here, 62 to 105, average bonus is 7,000, total average comp of 88K. And you, know, you think about the range here, you could legitimately be just four years into your career without having to sell your soul and work 100 hours a week, just going through you know, an FLDP program and a year or two as an analyst. And you could be making you know, $110,000, $115,000 a year. And again, you want to keep moving quick, two years in this tier in this level of the pyramid. So now you kind of graduate out of this six years and move into your first finance manager job. So I, this is hopefully when you have your first team, it'd probably be a small team, maybe one, two, three analysts that work for you. Um, and you, you probably work for somebody at a director or VP level, 
maybe even a, a divisional CFO in some cases. But you'll notice as we go up the band, the uh, range between the low and the high end gets bigger. And partly that is because, um, you know, you start to have people in this bucket that have worked at a company for 30 years, and you might have somebody that's worked at a company for five or six years if they're moving fast. So um, that, that drives a lot of variation because people that have been in the company for longer just on average tend to make a little bit more. But here, finance manager, you, know, you could be making as much as you know, and, about $160,000 a year. The average, average package would be like 118. Same story, right? Move every couple of years. Now you're at eight years in your career and you get to the director level. So director level, this is a pretty big job. This is where, and it's where you first uh, often get your t first taste of equity in, in the company. So here you are going to have a team like, you know, maybe three to 15 people. Uh, sometimes in the director level you have, you become a one, a one over one uh, where you have people that work for you that also have teams. So you could have three or four people and they could each have three or four people that work for them. Uh, and the way the equity works, if you're not, familiar, but this would be at a publicly traded company, this would be them giving you either options uh, or RSUs, restricted stock units, which uh, are effectively stock grants, which vest over you know, maybe two, three, four years. And once they vest, you can actually, you're given the, the share and you can sell it at that time. Or you can hold on to it and, and hope that it goes up before you trigger. But you could be at the director level just eight years in, making, you know, in the $200,000 range if you're moving quick and you're at a, a company that pays well. Um, and, you know, you're also going to get a, a fairly sizable bonus to go along with your base. A lot of companies are shifting towards maybe less base and actually putting making this bonus even more as a percentage of your comp and same with this equity uh, shifting more away from cash compensation and more towards equity based compensation so it's uh probably becoming familiar now but a couple of years in this in this uh, tier or level of the pyramid and you'd be 10 years in your career and you'd move to a divisional cfo vp of finance controller now you go on LinkedIn and, you know, it feels like everybody at every company is a VP of finance. And most of that's kind of bullshit, really. Uh, there's a lot of job title inflation you'll find on the Internet and on, uh, and on LinkedIn. But here we're talking about, you know, bigger companies, these VP of finance roles at Fortune 500, Fortune 1000, you know, big private companies. This is where compensation can really start to get high. You know, you're going to get some sort of base salary, which is going to be likely 200000 or more. And you're going to get a bonus, usually usually incentive-based, um, with a, which formatted as a percentage of your base salary. And then you're getting equity as a percentage of your base salary. And these compensation packages can become really rich. I mean, you talk about if you're the head of, let's say, FP&A for a Fortune 50 company, you're probably getting pretty close to a uh, million dollars all in of your base bonus and equity. Uh, same with divisional CFO roles, controller roles. So you can make real big money in this bucket, and you could you can legitimately get there in just 10 years. And in these roles, you're going to have big teams. You know, we're talking 20 to maybe even you know, 50, 75, 100 people that work for you. You're going to have um, teams of people that have big teams and maybe even another level deep where you've got um, people that 
are three levels below you. So big, big jobs, a lot of responsibility, um, but great, a great uh, place to get to in your career and sets you up well for the top of the heap, which is the CFO, kind of the holy grail of corporate finance, uh, which you can get to um, that level in, in a public company, a bigger public company, uh, you know, let's call it over a billion, or a private company, over 100 million, so 100 million to, to a billion. You can legitimately get there in 15 years. I actually know a, a couple of people who've done it quicker, um, but most people to get to that public CFO role are, are 20 plus years of their career. But these pack compensation packages are really big, right? Um, base bonus equity, car allowances, you name it. Uh, but the average, uh, I think it was based on a Grant Thornton study, showed a public CFO over a billion is a $2 million comp package. And uh, the big private CFOs are uh, just, just under a million. So really big money. And, um, you know, obviously a ton of responsibility. That tier below you, those are going to be the people that work for you. You're going to have divisional CFOs, you're going to have head of FP&A, a treasurer, a controller, uh, maybe a VP of supply chain or a commercial finance VP, all working for you. Um, big organization. You know, sometimes this could be upwards of maybe even you know, 500 to 1,000 people in your organization. And you also have a lot of liability, right? You're legally held accountable for making sure the, the books and records of the company are are clean and accurately stated. So that's it. Uh, that's the, this is just a quick summary of what the pyramid, let's call it, or uh, of corporate finance, what the trajectory and, and salaries look like. It's not perfect, but I think this gives people a good idea. And a lot of people are trying to understand, hey, if I, if I do well, where can I get to? I, I think this I, I know firsthand of people who have accelerated along this timeline, um, and, and it's very, it's definitely doable for people who are willing to work hard and, and play their cards right and network and work on their skills and develop. So that's all we had for today. Uh, please like or dislike the video, leave questions, comments, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, but leave questions. We're happy to try to answer anything we can to give you a little bit more information. And if you have requests for other videos, feel free to let us know. Um, but check back often because we're going to continue posting videos. 